In the previous video, we were looking at a Dyson hot and cool fan. However, it turned out that the uh, motor controller chip had blown and had backfed voltage and took out the microcontroller. And because the microcontroller is programmed with a, a program and Dyson's code, because it does other things like drives the display, as well as uh, you know controlling the temperature and things, even if we bought a replacement microcontroller, we wouldn't be able to, it, the unit still wouldn't work because it wouldn't have the correct program to uh, run it. And also, what I later discovered as well, that it even took the uh, the display board out. If I put the meter on to... Um, under ohms here and we'll just go across these pins here which are the power oh, I've got about a 200 about 200 ohm there and I did try injecting uh, 5 volts into this just to see what would happen and these two chips here just started to get a bit warm so it's obviously fried those as well so we couldn't actually repair that now i got an email off uh, one of the viewers uh, from australia so literally uh, the other side of the world and he said he had a dyson fan that had also failed and would i be interested in the parts to try and repair mine i said yeah absolutely now he did say that this board here was just dead uh, and you couldn't see any problems like any blown components on the board so obviously this board still has a fold on it but hopefully because it doesn't look like there's any catastrophic failure on it uh, we may be able to repair this one so that's what the plan is we'll see if we can repair this board and then if we can get this working put it in the uh, the original hot and cool fan that I purchased so we'll just put these parts to one side and I think we'll have a look at the circuit board now he did say the circuit board was just completely dead uh, it wasn't a lighting up at all so I think we'll start by checking where the power comes in which is on these contacts here now from what I remember, it goes through this uh, filter here. So we can check continuity from where the power comes in. I'll tell you what, I've got a new camera now. Um, so we'll see if we can zoom in a bit. Actually need to get the meter in shot as well. So I'll move up with it. Because I actually see what I'm doing now. Because previously when I was recording, I couldn't actually see what was being recorded until the uh, until I'd obviously finished I'd finished recording. So, all right. So the power comes in here, and it should end up on the other side of this filter, which it appears like it does. And we'll just go on the neutral. And that should end up on this one, I think. Or was it this one? Yeah, it's this one. If I can get the probe on with the conformal coating. There we go. Right, so we know the power's coming in on the two terminals here. And it's getting through this filter here. Now it then goes through there's some diodes here so i think we should check those next just to see if any of those are short circuited so arm diode check it just makes it a bit awkward with the uh, conformal coating because you're not too sure if you've got the probes on or not all right so that one's okay I think this probe is just about to snap again. Right, back with a new set of probes fitted. So let's see which is the negative side of these diodes. Let's see with the conformal coating on, it's a bit hard to actually test them. I think I just got a reading there, yeah, so that one's okay. I'm 
show which way around that one is. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. That one's okay. Right, so the power should be getting from here through these to the capacitor, which is here. Then we've got some kind of power supply chip here by the look of it. That looks like a little opto isolator. And I think it then goes through an inductor here and through to a capacitor and then through to this here, which I think is a five volt regulator. So I think the way the circuit works is this uh, little circuit here generates 12 volts and then drops it down to 5 volts. I'm quite tempted just to power this up and just measure some voltages here. So I think that's what we'll do next. Right, so. Now, because this is mains, we're going to have to be very careful. And I know the black one is the live. And we'll just double check that. And we'll just double check that we're actually getting power through or continuity through to the uh, correct terminals. So live to here. So we know the fuse is intact as well. And neutral comes to here. Nice. So I'm just going to power this up now. And I think I'll just zoom out a touch. I'm going to turn this over first because I don't particularly want to touch it while it's live. Let's pop that under there. Right. right, so this is now switched on and live. So I'm going to go on to volts DC. And I'm just going to probe this capacitor here just to see what voltage is on it. And as you can see, we've got 344 volts there. Now, this, I'm fairly sure, has a 5 volt regulator. And we don't have anything on the input side of it. What we do, it's like 0.2 of a volt. So that means we'll have nothing on the output side of it. 0.6 of a volt so the problem appears to be from here to there so I kind of suspect this switching IC I think I'll have to pull up the data sheet for that um, and then we'll see what exactly the pin out of it is so I shall do that and be back in a moment Right, so this chip is a LNK306DN. Apparently it's used instead of a capacitive dropper. So what happens is the power comes in on this pin here and it switches between that pin and these pins here, which are the output. And the other two pins here are for the regulation, which will be the feedback from that uh, opto-isolator there. Uh, it then goes through a, a couple of diodes and a, an inductor and then the output goes to a capacitor which is just here and then to this uh, voltage regulator. So I was a little bit concerned when um, I see a, a fellow repairer was looking at a, a similar a Dyson fan and he hooked his bench power supply up to the um, to the power supply here. To the ground to inject some voltage and I was a bit mm, that looks a bit risky to me because some of these power supplies aren't isolated from the mains 
and this one isn't if I just uh, I'll just plug it back in a second and I'll just show you exactly what I mean I'll just uh, I'll just zoom out a bit and by the way I'm not criticizing anybody you know it's like it's like anything if you don't know you don't know so right so this tab here is the ground of the power supply so if I just put my meter into the earth here and we'll just measure on the ground so we've got 116 volts there and that's the ground like I say, that's why you've got to be very careful with some things so you know if I was to for instance hook my oscilloscope up to here and use that as the ground then I'd be sending 116 volts in the oscilloscope which probably wouldn't be good right so enough of that so I think what I'll have to do is order one of those chips because I'm fairly sure that's going to be the fault and then we'll continue the video from there so it's been a couple of days and the new chips have arrived I've ordered another motor controller chip as well because I thought well I'm not sure how old this unit is and considering it failed on the uh, on the previous one I thought it might be worth just replacing that as uh, just to you know just to uh, hopefully prevent it failing sooner so we'll do that as well while we're on so we'll get this uh, chip out of here Thought or two, just in case. So that's the replacement, and we'll uh, zoom in a bit and fire up the hot air station. Let's put a bit of flux on this first, just to help. I don't know about the conformal cone. Right, that's the old one off. I'll just do a bit clean up there. Right now I'm going to remove this chip here, so Right, so that's the old chip out, which actually looks okay. Now, the one thing I have noticed is um, the new chip I've got is an MH, and this one is just an M. Now, I think the only difference is the H will accept up like th between 3.3 volts and 5 volts, whereas the original chip is 5 volts only. So. From what I understand on the data sheet, that's the only difference. So hopefully I'm right. Otherwise it mightn't be good. Right, let's see if we can get this chip in. Right, I think that's it. Right, we'll solder this up. Give that a clean up. Yeah, I think that looks okay. Right, I think we'll uh, give the bench a clean up and then we'll try it. That 
was the uh, Milwaukee Hoover that we uh, repaired in a previous video. Right, so I'll get the mains lead back on. and hopefully it doesn't go bang well I can hear something I can hear like a high pitched oscillation so I think it's doing something Let's just see what voltage we get on here now. So that one should be ground. And this one should be 5 volts. And we have 5 volts. Let's see if I can get on the input pin. And we're about 5.7 there. So I thought it was a 12, on the data sheet it says it gives out 12 volts, but obviously it, uh, you can adjust it with the parameters here, so. Right then. It seems to be doing something now. Now, which one was the on button? Uh, well, it doesn't seem to be switching on. Right, so I'm sure I'll unplug it in a moment. It doesn't seem to be switching on, but we seem to have 5 volts there. That uh, capacitor is discharged. Yeah, pretty much. Well, we seem to fix the power supply problem. I wonder what happens if we inject. 5 volts with a bench power supply into here so we'll disconnect it's already unplugged from the main so we'll disconnect these wires I'll get the bench power supply and we'll set it to 5 volts and we'll set it to about quarter of an amp or something. And we'll see what happens if we inject. Let's try and get on there for a ground. Trying to work out which way up this board is. So I don't seem to be getting anything on there. So I wonder if the process is dead on this one as well. And that would be a bit disappointing, wouldn't it? Right, I was just having a thing about this, <laughs> and I've just remembered something. The uh, the back of this display board, there's a little thing here, 
and it's a tilt switch. Don't know if you can hear there. There's a little ball bearing in here, and it's a safety device to stop the fan from switching on. Now, obviously, if I've got the display like that, it thinks it's lying down. So, hold on. Let's just try it. We'll inject 5 volts there. And I'll just tilt the board up a bit. I'll try to. I've got a red light now. I'll tilt the red light just flashed on there. I don't know if I've got these probes on properly. It's a bit hard trying to hold and everything together. Right, we've got a red light flashing. And we've got E5 on the display. So it actually looks like the processor's okay. And I think E5, if I remember right, is Hall Effect Sensor's not found. Which would make sense because it's not uh, it's not plugged into the motor. Right, so let's see if we can position this. Let's see if it runs of its own power now. Plug it in, let's get that solder out of the way. Right, so now we've got mains on. And we've got a power light. Right. So I've just unplugged the power. Just wait for the capacitors to discharge. Right, so that right, should be okay. So I think now it's a case of putting this back in the main unit and uh, reassembling it and we'll see if it works. Right, so I think the first thing I need to do is put the display board in. Which just goes in like that and I think there's a plastic retaining clip. It's just like a little window thing that just slides in the front. It goes in from here, doesn't it? I remember now. There we go. Yeah, so to take the circuit board out, you've got to push those two tabs, and this little clip, this little window comes out the front, and then you can access the display board. It's been a while since I've had the support, you see, so uh, I've got to try and remember how it went back together. Now. So the original circuit board went in. Right, I just had to have a quick look at the uh, previous video just to see how this thing goes back together. I say it's been that long. I'm just trying to organise these screws a bit better. Right, I'll screw this circuit board in first, I think. And one thing I'm just going to check, I've just had a thought, I wonder if the original motor is shorted. Because obviously you don't want to switch this on and then it explode everywhere, because that wouldn't be good, would it? Let's just check the resistance between these windings. 137, 135, 137, yeah that's okay. Just thought I'd check that just uh, just for peace of mind. Right. So I think I need to take that screw back out, and this bit needs to go in first. Yeah, this looks a bit awkward to get back together. I was trying to work out how, because uh, I remember it was a bit of a bit awkward to get this apart. I 
It's a very good design this, it's not very uh, user friendly. Alright, oh, okay, I think this might be like a one way sort of clip. Because this has got a bit of a chamfer on it, so I guess it clip when you press it, it sort of clips together. It's just all got to come apart the other way. So I think we might be okay. very good design either. Right, we're getting there slowly. Looks like there's a couple of screws missing out the bottom here which I didn't take out. I think the uh, previous owner had taken some bits out already. top section to put back on now right that's it uh, all back together right then I think uh, it's just uh, ready to plug in and test now Let's try the power button. Well, the motor briefly spun and then stopped. I don't think that seems quite right. Well, the motor is spinning. All right. It's because of the. Um, it must work on the heat. I've never used one of these before. You see. Right. Oh, that's blowing. I put it on the hot, and it came up with E eight. So here we are back in bits again. Now, I knew there's a temperature sensor in here and E8 seems to be the uh, unit overheating. So this is the temperature sensor. I don't know where it's supposed to live, but it looks like when I've took this board out, there's a big black mark under here as well. So I think the power's gone through these lines. And if I just zoom down here, you may be able to see Just on this chip here, there's a blown track just there. There's a track that's blown. I don't know whether somebody's replaced this IC before or not, or whatever. Now, I have got a board that the uh, viewer kindly sent us, so I think I'm going to replace this board with that one so I shall do that and then uh, we'll be back momentarily so I've swapped the board over and I've plugged it in so let's see what it does now right so that looks like the uh, cord and it's uh, just so you can see it blown there, you probably need to hear it in any way. 
Right, so it's working on cold. I'll just check the uh, oscillation works. Yeah, that seems good. Right, we'll try hot now then. And I guess the number on the bottom is the uh, degrees that you want it to heat up to. So we'll set that to 37 and starting to ramp the uh, speed up there. thermal camera here as well so put the thermal camera on and we'll see yeah you can see it there getting hot around the outsides 40 degrees 43 degrees there I think we'll call this one a fix so pretty much every board was blown in this fan uh, so it's a good job that uh, like I say a viewer from Australia sent us a replacement boards over even though they were faulty we managed to fix it so well I think uh, like I said we'll call this one a fix then so if you enjoyed this video please give it the thumbs up if you want to see more like it please subscribe any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Are you still here? Still working. Hasn't blown up yet. Give it time though, I'm sure it will. See you all later.